And welcome to Fully Charged. Now, imagine that you want to have an electric car, but you live in a narrow suburban street uh, like this one here in, in Oxford. And you've got to have somewhere to charge the car, and there's nowhere to charge it, and that's the whole problem, and you can't have an electric car because there's nowhere to charge it at your home. Really good excuse. About 40% of UK homes don't have anywhere off the street to park their car, so therefore they're restricted in the way they charge them. But the other problem is, if you put a charging post on a little narrow street like this, it's another piece of street furniture. What you want is a way of charging a car on a street like this that you don't really notice unless it's being used. Oh. Oh. So well, Ollie, this is, I think, a very exciting turn of events to see this thing in action. Absolutely. So, um, in fact, you're you're kind of in the, the middle of our living lab laboratory, I, right. I should say, because um, we're actually sitting in the middle of commissioning them and installing them. So they'll actually be going live next week to residents uh, right. on the street. Um, but yeah, we're really, really excited because the, the key thing for us was could we really extend a type of infrastructure like this that minimizes the impact on the urban yeah. space. It, Thank it you. seems very simple, but I'm sure what's underneath yeah. is a little bit more complex. I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I guess the, the site that we're in now is probably the worst case because it's so narrow um, and you know, you'd never expect to really install any kind of infrastructure, particularly yeah. charging infrastructure on a, on a location like this. But the very fact we can do it here yeah. goes to show how versatile the infrastructure is in terms of being able to be installed anywhere. Right. Um, and you're right. I mean, the, the, the technology behind it, it's been, we've kind of working in stealth mode for about two years now right. to really kind of understand you know, how we can actually bring something like this to life. Um, but you're, again, you know, when it comes to street furniture and street clutter, that's something that we were really keen to be sympathetic to, right. um, because ultimately, you know, pavements are for pedestrians, yes. uh, and ultimately, what we hope we'll find is that generally these will be used overnight when it's cheaper to charge. Yeah. And now the thing. Okay, so the thing is, so you, if you live here on, on this street, very nice street in North Oxford, not scruffy, but you know, but if you live here and you've got an electric car. What do you have to do to be able to use this? What do you need? What's the what's the so, business? Um, yeah, plan so for so for the uh, production versions, because we're dealing with sort of hand-built uh, uh, prototypes right, right. now. Um, for the for the production versions, what you have is an app. Uh, right. You'll use your app just to w work out where the charge points are, if they're operating or not, right. and potentially even if there's anybody parked next to them. Um, right. And so wherever you live, you'll be able to rock up right next to the charge point, press the up button on the app. It will. Right like magic come out of the ground, yeah. you'll plug in and away you go right. and that's it. And so then you have an account through that app then that's paying for the electricity, that's yeah. how it's done. A absolutely right. and so we're really keen to uh, in the future leverage things like agile tariffs to really pass yeah. on price savings for using uh, charge points at off-peak times and of course that has wider implications for, for managing electric vehicles on the grid yeah. uh, uh, as we sort of grow the fleet. Yeah, because I mean, there's there is quite a few. How many are on this street at the moment? Then you've got oh, it does go up a long way. So all the yeah. new tarmac is where you've put new ones in. So our plan is to install clusters of these right. UE one charge points. So not just one at a time, yes. but ultimately uh, at least maybe six of them in right. one go. So you've always got that certainty of access to a charge point, yeah. which is really key because that convenience factor is really going to drive electric vehicle adoption in urban areas like yeah. this. And so to install them then, what, what's clearly happened here is you've taken up the old pavement and you've had to, I mean, how much infra, sort of underground infrastructure have you done? Was there, were, were there, was there cabling along this street anyway or did you have to install new cabling? So we've installed a new cable uh, and a new grid connection to right. facilitate this installation, which would be probably typical of most installations that we do. The great news is, is that we're leveraging the low voltage network so you don't have to do expensive grid right. reinforcement for this type of infrastructure to be here. Mm. Um, in terms of uh, the digging the holes, actually, it's, um, although it's a relatively tall charge point, 
although quite discreet. Yeah. Um, it's actually quite shallow as well, right. so you don't have so to. So it's dig. not a really deep. It's no, not, it's not that. It, it, it folds in on itself. So yeah, it's... and that's really important for yeah. really busy urban environments. You've got lots of existing services to contend with, yeah. from broadband cables to uh, gas other, mains, exactly, and yeah. all sorts Water, of things. Everything, yeah, it's yeah. all going to be running in the street, isn't it? I don't, have you had any feedback yet from local residents? I mean, I can see this is a, a, a car share car here, but is, have, have anyone, have they complained or have they been pleased? So actually it's been a really uh, interesting experience because one of the um, key things that we're trying to understand is really understand the, the qualitative data around how people feel about charging infrastructure yeah. and this type of charging infrastructure in particular. And actually the, the feedback has been really positive. Oh, great. Um, so great. We, I've talked to, to uh, residents on the street who will describe themselves uh, not my words as NIMBYs and right. they've actually been really pleased with this type of infrastructure in place. Mm. They've also professed to, to say that they're never going to go electric right. so hopefully we can change their mind <laughs> uh, but the great news is um, you know where there is loads of resistance normally to permanent infrastructure uh, we've, we, we seem to be winning the hearts right. and minds. I mean it is because it isn't permanent infrastructure that's the thing it's a sort of it's sort of impermanent because it disappears I mean yeah. When I, because I, when I drove up here, I couldn't see them. I didn't. I went, where's the bloody charge points? I can't see anything. And that's Which the is idea. The, it is the idea, isn't it? It's yeah. Great. yeah. We're working with the fantastic Oxford City Council for our kind of first prototype hub. Uh, but we've recently won Innovate UK funding to roll out an additional 18 hubs with Plymouth and Dundee City Councils. Right. Completely so different. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's again for learnings. And so we yeah. can refine our product before we launch commercially, sort right. of late 2020, early 2021. Right. So then you'll mass manufacture them and it'll just be a big box that you stick, stick in the ground and it'll, you'll switch it on and it'll work. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then, so then presumably the background, the kind of uh, software that links all that together is yeah. equally important and, that, and you've been developing that alongside this thing. User experience is really key and, yeah. and this, uh, you know, we believe really in the one pump fits all philosophy of petrol and diesel that everyone's yeah. taken for granted for so many years. And so our infrastructure, it's important that you don't need any special cables or right. equipment to operate it. All you'll need is an app because um, you, you can't have you bending down onto the ground to operate these yeah. things to set up an account and you'll be able to plug in any type 2 cable and charge mm. um, but yeah we we've actually also designed our hardware to be platform agnostic so we can integrate with other apps with so uh, oh, Dundee right. for example use a particular app for to unify the user experience right. for their EV drivers we can integrate into that That's good. Uh, we're also looking to integrate into parking apps for example so if you have an app that pays for parking in a certain area it will you, also pay for charging. exactly right. so why not why not the, I mean, the next step that I've only just started to see emerge is that the car the, the car has an account I mean that's this is my long prayer that you know there's just starting to be where you literally you, you drive up here you plug it in the car knows where it is who this is communicates correctly pays a bill you know yeah. that's that it's that thing would be i think it's going to be a few years before that's ubiquitous but that's the the dream and absolutely and we we're always looking at innovations like that because right. absolutely and that would be quite an easy thing for you to integrate into your system you absolutely right. the, the great thing about our charge points is that they're smart they've got all the right. communications in place to be able to leverage that sort of technology yeah. um, as as it, as it evolves So the great thing about it is that then they're not in the way all the time. You know, so it was so such a revelation when this thing popped out of the ground. It's absolutely brilliant. But tell, tell me, what power do they give out then? So these are seven kilowatt chargers. Right. So, if so the same as you'd have in your house. Yeah, yeah. So if you're fortunate enough to have a Tesla like you, you know, you'll wake up to a full charge in the morning. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, it's going to fill any car that there is. You yeah. Know, it's, it's and that, that was the key thing to make sure that you you do get a full charge with the latest generation of electric vehicles. Right. And seven kilowatts is, is that's the my argument always is we need more of these and we don't we don't worry about rapid charges you do because I don't use them just from experience you use them very rarely whereas this you want all the you know every day and that's absolutely what you've got here is a well, every night you want to be able to charge them. Absolutely. There have been so many studies done to show that that's the most sustainable way to, yeah. to, to really support a, a growing fleet of electric vehicles yeah. for the next decade. Well, it's brilliant news. Well done for, for getting these first ones going and, uh, and good luck with the future. Well done, Ollie. Thank Thanks you. Very much indeed. Thanks, Thanks very much. Uh, well, that's all we've got time for. I do think this is a brilliant solution for on-street charging. It is such a, a, a kind of, it's so good. I love it. I'm really obsessed with this thing. Really clever idea. Uh, I just, so I want to thank Urban Electric for showing us what they were doing here. They are also currently running a Crowdcube funding round. 
uh, which is to help them uh, uh, finance the, um, the charges they're putting in in Plymouth and Dundee either end of the British Isles. Uh, so that's very exciting to so have a look at that. There's a link uh, for that underneath. This is not a donation site, as you, some of you may not know, but uh, Crowdcube is an investment opportunity for small investors who want to invest in modern breakthrough technology like this. I'm sure if you're interested in getting these charges in your street, you need to work, work with your local council, but also you can get in touch with uh, Urban Electric because I think this is a really brilliant solution. Anyway, that's all. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please do have a look at the Patreon link beneath this uh, episode. And uh, while I unplug the car, as normal, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.